So Beyonce may have just released Homecoming, but she's not the only one who came home. Let's talk about it on this episode of PLL The Perfectionist, After The Secrets. So where we left off on the last episode is Caitlyn is now in the hospital due to being hit by a car that was allegedly driven by Mason. But as we go through this episode, we're going to find out that that might not be true. As Dylan and Ava are waiting for Caitlyn to come out of surgery, Allie and Mona enter into the hospital and see them and they can join into a group conversation. And now, Dylan and Ava finally decide to do something that is not normal to Pretty Little Liars for Allie and Mona is especially Dylan and Ava decide to tell the truth to two bystanding cops that are looking over the hospital room that Caitlin is staying in. And as Dylan and Ava are walking over to them, they say they want to make a statement, but who butts in frickin' Dana Booker with her classic sneeze? She relieves the officers of their duty and tells Dylan and Ava that they can say anything to her that's related to the case, and obviously Dylan and Ava close up immediately and give a smart ass remark. So the catalyst for this episode is Dylan wanting to go to the sewer alone to retrieve the phone that is now down there that belongs to Mason. And similar to the last episode, we're living in three different worlds, so we're gonna take it one by one. So let's start with Caitlin in the hospital. So after she comes out of surgery, one of her first guests is her mom, and it's the mom that cheated on her other mom. So of course, Caitlin has a specific opinion about it, and her and her mom go at it. But what comes out of this conversation is to save the political image of the family is that her mom wants Caitlyn to lie that she doesn't know anything about the affair since her mom is now running for governor. Moving on, so let's talk about Mona. Mona decides to go on her own mission and she finds the RV that Taylor used to live in. And while Mona's there, we realize that she's still talking to Bad Bishop because she's still playing the chess game on her phone. And Bad Bishop asks to reschedule their meeting since he couldn't make the last one. And in typical Mona fashion, she decides to go snooping and finds Taylor's secret beacon guard system that was implanted into the RV. Also, remember in the first episode how I said I feel like BH1 through 4 is the liars? I'm wrong. In this episode, we finally find out that BH1 through 4 is the Hotchkiss family. So, why did Claire invent this system just to spy on her own family? So as Allie's running Ava's fashion show backstage, she finally realizes that Taylor is at the cemetery. As in a previous flashback, Taylor said they never look for a dead girl at a cemetery. So Allie goes there, finds Taylor, because now they think alike, which is the mantra of these past couple episodes. She finds Taylor and urges her to come home. And now where we end on this journey, is that Allie decides to reintroduce Taylor to Claire. She came home, but what is Claire going to do about this? Obviously, she's in shock, but how is she really going to embrace this information, and what is she going to do for the future now? <sighs> Moving on. So, Ava decides to go and help Dylan retrieve the phone, and as they go through the sewer, there's a man dressed in a pig costume that's extremely creepy and scary at the end of the sewer, so they run back out, and who do they meet outside of the sewer? Dana Booker, she, this woman is everywhere, and they already retrieved the phone, and Dana decides to flip it back on Dylan and Ava, saying they're trying to manipulate the information, because apparently Mason Gregory has an alibi that he actually was at the pool party that night. There's witnesses, so now, they're screwed again. Moving on, so let's go back to Caitlyn. Mason gets out of his crew tournament very quickly, comes back, and the first person he visits when he's in town is Caitlyn. So Mason decides to apologize for everything that he did to the liars, basically claiming that he just wanted a taste of what it was like to be Nolan Hotchkiss in a sense, but it didn't work out for him, which makes me think that he was a puppet in the overall scheme of things and he decided to just be done with the situation altogether. Ultimately, he realized that that's not what he wanted is the popularity and blackmailing people and getting his way that way. Mason also reveals that he did not steal a stash of secrets that Dylan went looking for that one day in the greenhouse. So, again, shit, SOS mode. 
someone else has his secrets now. Mason says that it was a double insurance policy, so someone else also knows their secrets because no one told them. And now the liars enter into the hospital. Mason's already gone, and Dylan, Ava, and Caitlin discuss what their next moves are going to be, and they decide they want to flip the table, the script, on Dana Booker and start playing games with her. Quote, they said, whatever it takes. So now, this is kind of the hero's journey that's starting out and they're going to do whatever it takes. So now the stakes are dramatically raised going into the rest of the series. And now to end the episode, is Nolan Hotchkiss alive? I don't know how that could be possible because we saw him dead, impaled through a steel fence. So I don't know how he can be alive, but while Mona is still at Taylor's RV, a notification comes up on the Beacon Guard system saying that BH5 is in motion, which is Nolan Hotchkiss's tracker. What's crazy about it, it says that BH5 Nolan Hotchkiss is in Mona's apartment right now. So what do you guys think about it? Do you think Nolan Hotchkiss is alive or do you think whoever this A figure is is using that as a bait? I have a couple different theories, but that's gonna be for next week's episode. And so as always, after all the tea that's been spilled today, can you keep this one a secret? Shh.